What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all have had a great Friday. It is finally the weekend, but it's going to be a very, very active weekend as we have our 4th of July weekend. There is a lot to talk about regarding the tropics as it's looking increasingly likely that the southeast, the United States, the southeast is going to get impacted somehow by a tropical system early to mid next week. Um, this thing is obviously going to affect the Caribbean islands first. Places like Jamaica, Cuba, Hispaniola, it's obviously already affecting some of them now. So we're going to break down all the model runs today, uh, what it looks like right now, what it, what could happen to it overnight, and what we're expecting this thing to do as of now uh, for the whole entire weekend as we get into early next week when it becomes a threatening scenario potentially. So uh, there's a lot to talk about. Stay, stick with me in this video because we're going to break down what we know and take a look at everything here. So if you guys have not subscribed, please do so. Um, I upload content every day, sometimes twice a day, especially on the weekends like tomorrow and Sunday. I likely will do two videos, a morning update and an evening update. Um, so I talk weather even when the weather is not a lot going on. So uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. I got you all covered and appreciate the amazing support that you all have given me over the last month. Um, June was supposed to be a slower month and has been very active. And you guys have responded by uh, supporting me and my channel. Thank you all for supporting my passion. Much appreciated. Like the video if you like it. Um, that helps the video get out there. And definitely hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. And um, So let's get going here. There's a lot to talk about. So stick with me here. Right now, uh, this thing is a 991 millibar storm. So it is definitely uh, it's low enough to be a Category 1 hurricane, right? Um there is some big time disagreements between what it is now and what the operational models are showing. I'm telling you, and we're going to break all that down, but right now, 991, um, 85 mile per hour storm. So it's well above the category one threshold of 75 miles per hour. And it's sitting now, this thing is booking it 30 miles per hour. So, um, it is done got past the lesser Antilles and it's starting to get south of Puerto Rico now, well south. Um, but you have hurricane warnings up for parts of Hispaniola. And uh, tropical storm warnings, tropical storm watches, and an entire island of Jamaica is under a hurricane warning. I know I've had a lot of people ask about Jamaica. You guys are under a hurricane warning. So this is going to affect y'all starting as early as tomorrow, especially tomorrow evening. So hunker down. I think y'all are going to get the south end of the storm. I don't think y'all are going to get directly hit, but you never know. So hunker down. Big chunk of uh, Cuba is under a hurricane watch. And check out the cone when it gets all the way into Florida. And by about 2 p.m., Tuesday p.m. about 2 p.m. Tuesday, <laughs> um, it's looking to be just off the south uh, southwestern coast of Florida. But this is when it gets a big time unknown, um, and we're going to break all that down here. So uh, South Carolina, that's where I live. Uh, Georgia, you guys are in the cone of uncertainty. So the entire, almost the entire state of Florida is also. So um, we have to start to pay attention to the storm because impacts can be. Uh, pretty large across the southeast this is what we got going on this is what this is this is what old elsa looks like and by the way i hadn't even mentioned the name of the hurricane but i think most of you know it's hurricane elsa yes like elsa and frozen for you guys who have kids even if you don't have kids it's a great uh, it's a great disney movie for sure um I, I love the frozen movies but um here we go um this is what this time frame right now is considered dmin it's basically diurnal minimum it's basically during a tropical system, when it's going on, this is the less likely chances for it to intensify. Normally, if it's a stronger system, it likes to hold its own around sunset. It's basically when you have a period where the sea surface temperatures are around the same temperatures as the air temperatures above the sea surface. So there's not much of a uh, temperature difference. So you don't normally get the convective explosions. So right now, I'm not going to say it's struggling. But it's definitely maintaining intensity, and it actually might drop to an 85 mile, an 80 mile per hour storm before we get to D max, which is just before sunrise or right after sunrise, when you have the air temperature um, that is lower compared to the sea surface temperatures, which are higher. So if you wake up in the morning here in the in, in the Caribbean Ocean, and it's 75 degrees, say in the air temperature and the water temperature is uh, 85 degrees, that's a 10 degree difference. That's enough to cause, not I wouldn't say rapid intensification, but strengthening um, due to the differences in air temperature. Normally you get some convective explosions because of that. But the center of circulation is right around here. 
You're still getting some convective explosions right here um, around the, I would say, this is probably the southern area of circulation of what of what is in place, but it's still a healthy looking storm to be a category one storm. So um, let's look at the intensity plots. This thing is going to stay at a category one hurricane, but of course, and we're going to take a look at the, um, the HWRF model um, because I really think... Uh, that model is doing the best, maybe not right now, but I think it's going to do the best as far as intensity. But right now it hasn't stayed in the category one hurricane uh, for a while. And then it's going to interact with land. Hurt tropical systems do not like land. And this is probably right around when it interacts with Cuba. And uh, we'll see what happens. So let's get going past that here. Um, this is the global and the um, hurricane model tracks. A lot of them stay about the same, but then it gets around south of Hispaniola, and that is when we start to get spread in the guidance. But a lot of them, if it goes over land, it's going to weaken, and it's going to have a hard time getting back going. I'm going to talk about why. There's a lot of whys I'm going to talk about towards the second half of this video, so definitely stick with me, guys. Um, and But a lot of models have it going into the eastern area of the Gulf of Mexico. So right now, let me click on this. Hopefully it loads pretty good. Okay, it did. So right now you have uh, the recon mission going out to the storm right now. I don't think they're quite there yet, but they're heading out there, so it's going to get some more data. I uh, doubt we're going to get more data before the 8 p.m. update, which I just showed you the 5 p.m. update. So by the time some of you watch it, it's going to be the 8 p.m. update. It's either going to stay an 85-mile-per-hour storm, or I wouldn't be surprised if it dropped to an 80-mile-per-hour storm. Either way, I don't think there's going to be much differences in the intensity uh, from now until the 8 p.m. update. But here we go. Here's a broader view of the Caribbean. Here comes Elsa. Elsa is moving at 30 miles per hour. That is not necessarily a good thing for the health of the storm. It's kind of outrunning its low-level circulation, if you will. The convection up top is outrunning its, um, its low-level circulation, and so you're not able to get a core to really wrap around the low-level circulation. Therefore, you can't get a huge intensifying storm, if you will, but it's still a healthy storm. So this is going to continue to move quick, but it's going to begin to slow down right in this range because you have the subtropical ridge right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to get out of the influencing grips of the steering currents of this subtropical ridge. Basically, it's going to get into a weaker part of the ridge that's in this area right here. It's going to begin to slow down a little bit. And this is when it has a chance in this area right in here to begin to intensify again tomorrow. Saturday is going to be a huge day for the health of this storm. Saturday evening is definitely going to be a big time frame for the steering. Where is this storm going to go? But uh, this area right in here, when Elsa gets here, this is going to, we're going to find out a lot about the storm and where it's going to go. Is it going to go over Cuba? Is it going to fit between Jamaica and Cuba? If it does that, it's going to get in this area, and the waters right here are in the mid-80s. Some, some areas are in the upper 80s. That is very warm. There's also lower shear right here. Shear intensifies as we get to the west of Florida. I'll show you that in a minute, too. But here it is. This thing is booking it, but it's going to begin to slow down overnight, I think. And this is what I'm talking about, 29 degrees Celsius. It's around, you know, the mid-80s in Fahrenheit. That is very warm in this little cup of uh, just south of, in the waters just south of Cuba. And this has a chance to track in this area. In fact, I really think it will. Um, and I'll show you what the latest GFS shows. Let me say this before I show this to you. I just showed you that the storm right now has a 990, it's a 991 millibar storm. So the GFS has this initializing is a 1001 millibar storm, so a 1001 millibar storm. It has an initializing basically as a, a a strong tropical storm, but really this thing is a decently healthy Category 1 hurricane. It's initializing wrong, and it did the same thing with 12Z, but there's now two runs in a row that it's, it's wanting to not have Elsa as strong. It's really weird. Um because a lot of models are showing this now. The storm gets just south of uh, Hispaniola, and I will say it did tick north, um, but it still takes the path um, of fitting between Cuba and Jamaica, where there is going to be a little lower shear. In fact, I think there's going to, 
the entire path of, of this hurricane, this tropical system, I think this will be the area where it has the least amount of shear, I think. Um, I also think this will be some of the warmest waters it's in. So I think downstream, as far as the intensification of ELSA, I think this area plays a huge factor in the future intensity of this storm. If you have a stronger storm right here, the GFS wants to keep it a tropical storm. It basically wants to weaken the storm. Um, and it gets it has it kind of cruising over Cuba and kind of cruising over Cuba more from uh, basically more from east to west. Um, if it approaches it from this way and just goes from more of a south to north, then it cruises right on over Cuba, gets on through it, and then that's it. But if it kind of cruises long ways over Cuba, it's going to weaken. And that's what the GFS shows. And we get into Tuesday morning, and it's around the Florida Keys. It's a pretty weak tropical storm. Gets into the western Gulf of Mexico, um, the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And the storm really just, I mean... It's not that strong. It never really can gather itself. I will tell you, and I'll show you this in a second, that the shear looks to increase right in this range. So yesterday I was talking about how does this thing get into the Gulf of Mexico and not intensify? Well, I think the upper level patterns, upper level winds, shear is not really supportive for a ton of intensification in the Gulf of Mexico in this period. That might prevent um, it from really intensifying, undergoing any kind of rapid intensification, even in the Gulf of Mexico, which we tend to see a lot. Um, and even the HWRF model uh, shows that too. It shows a much stronger storm, and I'll show you that in a second. But And then it makes landfall in the Panhandle of Florida as a tropical storm and affects the entire southeast, but not very a real strong storm. Here comes the old Euro, who has not really budged. I will tell you, though, the European has finally shifted a little southwest on its track. And has a tropical storm kind of going into Hispaniola. Kind of takes the same track as the GFS, but it definitely rides all up through Cuba and weakens and basically dissipates into nothing. Um, what's odd is it almost kind of re-energizes the, um, the energy left from Elsa and uh, strengthen, strengthen, strengthens it again in the Gulf of Mexico, um, but just gets kind of lost in the currents. Real, really weird scenario for the European today and actually lingers in the eastern Gulf of Mexico for a few days and finally makes a landfall as maybe a tropical storm next weekend. <laughs> so it's very odd, very odd. The Canadian model, we'll roll through this really quick because it doesn't warrant much uh, in gold here, but it kind of takes more of a European scenario as far as the path. But then it gets it east of Florida into the Bahamas is in a tropical storm begins to strengthen over the Gulf Stream maybe and strengthens up as it's approaching landfall and might briefly get to a hurricane and get into Cape Hatteras not Cape Hatteras Cape Hatteras and the Outer Banks um, and do that old classic scrape the Carolinas and head out the sea scenario that's what the Canadian likes now let's look at the big dog the HWRF model um, I really think we need to respect this model a little bit more because so far it's already the leading model with this. We gave a lot of props to the, props to the GFS early on, but the GFS has been very weird today. Um, here's the HWRF model, which is the main hurricane model, even for the National Hurricane Center. It has this thing strengthening, actually, overnight. We get into uh, Saturday morning. It has an intensifying then it kind of maintains throughout the day tomorrow, gets south of Hispaniola, scrapes the eastern edge of it, um, and then it fits, as we get into Sunday morning, it fits itself between Jamaica and Cuba. If it does this, guys, if this scenario is is comes to friction, this is a Category 3 hurricane right here. Um, or, you know, a low-end Category 3 hurricane, fitting in kind of the um, just south of Cuba and it's actually got a 954 millibar low pressure here uh, as we're getting into Monday morning about to slam into the southern shores of Cuba here and then it gets over them high mountain ranges of Cuba weakens substantially and then probably comes off of Cuba as maybe a category one hurricane weakens but then it begins to strengthen again as we get into Tuesday morning um, it's starting to affect the um, the western coast of Florida, if we were to take this as if it's going to happen, 
begins to intensify again. Not a ton of intensification because I'm telling you, I think the eastern Gulf of Mexico, um, there might be some shear in place that really limits a lot of um, strengthening. Um, and you normally can get a lot of strengthening in the Gulf of Mexico, but the water temperatures are going to be warm enough, I tell you that. But it, it barely begins to make a landfall around Wednesday morning, kind of in the armpits, if you will, of uh, Florida and the, uh, basically the eastern panhandle of Florida as probably this would be a Category 2 hurricane. So uh, a pretty significant event. And then it begins to move through Georgia into the Carolinas, kind of like a path like Michael did. Um, but this is very interesting, guys. Um, I'm very intrigued. It's going to be, for me, I know that the, a person who loves weather, it's going to be an exciting weekend of trying to figure out what's going to happen. Here's the GEF. GEFS to basically GFS assembles. Um, a lot of them want to keep this storm uh, just in between Jamaica and Cuba. Uh, then it kind of starts to spread apart. But altogether, um, it really keeps the storm kind of weak. Um, but there is some stronger uh, signals here that this could be a stronger storm even west of Florida into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So I will show you the shear that I'm talking about. So here comes the storm. It's right here, right? So it gets right here. Uh, when is this? This is around Saturday evening, Saturday night. And it gets away from the Hispaniola, and then it starts to get in between Jamaica and Cuba. Well, this is around Sunday afternoon, evening. This is when it kind of has the least amount of shear to deal with. Um, but then as it's starting to get to Cuba, it has an interaction with land. And then as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it really begins to deal with some shear, especially up top. Notice these uh, colors of red right here. These are This is higher shear, basically. Um, and I think that limits a lot of intensification, even if it can get fully into that area of the eastern Gulf of Mexico. We'll see what happens. Um, even the National Hurricane Center mentioned that there isn't favorable... Um, upper level winds that support a lot of intensification in the Gulf of Mexico in this area right here. So very interesting. As far as the steering currents, um, basically, I, I kind of mentioned this early in the video, um, you have the subtropical ridge and basically you have a flow out of the, uh, I'm trying to not get my directional mixed up, out of the southeast right here. So that's basically allowing the storm to get going. So it's going to kind of get away from the grip of a strong subtropical ridge. It kind of weakens out here, so it gets away, and it kind of is able to create its own path in the weakening of the ridge. So that's kind of how that happens, and that's why it slows down, because there's not a lot of steering currents once it gets around Cuba, and not a lot of influencing steering currents. So that's why it kind of slows down, um, has a chance to intensify, but then the big, big question is, when is it going to hit land? How long is it going to stay over Cuba? Cuba is going to be the big wild card. I think we pretty much know and have a good idea that it's not going to hit Hispaniola, kind of like the Euro was showing the last couple of days. It's not going to hit them, but Cuba is a big wild card here. It always is in the Caribbean. So that's all I got, guys. A long video, but I felt like we need a good breakdown there of what's going on. I will definitely have you guys an update in the morning, first thing, and then another update tomorrow evening. Thank y'all for tuning in and y'all have a blessed night.